Here we are at Sigwell, and this is the new Handywell 160. Handy in size and huge in features. There's not a MIG on the market like it, really. Most little MIGs this size, you've got to adjust wire feed speed and voltage to get amperage. With this little baby, it's all easy as pie. So the Handywell 160 is really easy to set. You can set it in three steps. Step one, you need to choose what welding process you want to use. And this machine is capable of MIG welding with gas shielded wires, so with shielding gas, or gasless wires, which is flux cord wire with, with flux in the center of it. Or you can use stick electrodes, manual arc electrodes on this machine. How you choose the right process is using the yellow soft button and it moves the blue light along and you get the right process. Today I'm going to set the machine up on gasless wire 0.9. So I'm going to toggle the blue light to mid gasless. That's step one, done. Step two, we're going to now choose what size wire we're using. So on gasless wire, on this machine we can use 0.9 or 0.8. You select the right size wire by rotating the control knob clockwise to 0.9. So step three is to choose your plate thickness. Unlike other machines on the market, this machine has plate thickness control. And that makes setting up very, very easy. So you just take the control knob, push it in once, it moves down to plate thickness on the blue light, and then you can adjust it from thin to thick. If you're not too sure what your plate thickness is that you're going to weld, then get a ruler or a vernier caliper and just check the thickness of the material you're about to weld. So that one, those pieces of plate are three millimetre, so therefore I'm going to set the machine to three. It's that easy, that simple. The Handywell 160 machine, very versatile. We've set it up for gasless MIG welding. We could also do gas shielded MIG welding with solid wire, really good on car panels, thin car panels. The beauty of this machine, it will weld down to 0.6 of a millimetre in thickness. That's very thin welding. On the opposite scale, it goes up to 10 millimetres thickness on the high side. It also stick welds. And to go to stick welding, press the soft yellow button and it moves the machine into stick. This machine comes standard with VRD, voltage reduction device which is a safety device to improve the safety when you're using electrodes. So when you're welding with the different processes, you have to set up the connection cables in different spots between the positive and the negative terminal. The terminals are marked with a white negative or a positive symbol. So in stick welding, the work return lead and clamp needs to go into the negative and the electrode holder will go to the positive terminal. In gasless MIG welding, it's the opposite. So that'll go there, which connects to the gun, which is to the negative terminal, and the work return clamp and lead will go to the positive. For solid wire MIG welding, it's the reverse. Always, when you're changing these over, these connection terminals, make sure that they're nice and tight to give her a good electrical connection so you don't get any burnout. So the wire is now set up. It's got a bit of tension on it, which is great so it doesn't spin off. Of course, MIG wire is wound like a spring. So if you let it go and don't hold onto it, it springs off. Now I just need to get the MIG pliers and take the wire out. Make sure that you're holding onto it. I'm going to cut the bent end off and straighten it with my hands so I can feed it into the inlet guide, which is this piece here. And that goes over the feed roll. I've got the right feed roll on to match the wire size. So the feed roll has to be 0.9 to match the 0.9 gasless wire. And then that goes through into the outlet guide which is the blue part, and you need to feed that into the MIG gun. This is a two metre MIG gun on this machine. 
and it's hardwired into the actual feed mechanism. And I feed that up by about 30 centimetres, 300 millimetres, which is basically a, a school ruler in length. Done that, I lower the top roller and push up the pressure mechanism. You, you don't want to over tighten this mechanism, otherwise it squashes the wire and that gives you trouble back at the tip. Okay, so we're now we're going to load the machine up, the uh, Handywell 160 machine with gasless MIG wire. Open up the case. I've got a roll here of uh, 0.9 gasless on a 100 millimetre diameter spool. Um, and we've got to put the right parts on to make sure that it feeds correctly. So the machine comes with a plastic washer, a reasonably flat, that goes on the, on the spool hub. Then there's a steel washer that goes on, the spool of wire goes on, then there's a, a washer that's got a cutout in it, a flat, two flat sides, that goes on. The spring, and then there's the retaining nut. Now, this is all listed and shown in the operating manual. And if you ever lose your operating manual, you can always go onto sigwell.com.au and get a copy off it off our website. So we're nearly ready to feed this through the gun now to get it out here. But before I can do that, I should take off the gas nozzle, take out the contact tip, which is the little copper tip, which is a very, very important part of the, of the welding circuit. That's where the power transfers from this machine onto the wire to make it melt. So I've got the tip out. I can now pull the trigger and that'll start feeding the wire through the gun. As the wire gets close to the handle, you'll start to feel it to chatter a little bit and then you know it's coming out the end. Put the tip back on. Screw it back in, and then a nip up with the pliers so it's not overly tight, but just snug, and then the gas nozzle over the top. When you're putting the gas nozzle on, be very careful that you don't put your hand over the gas nozzle and put it on, otherwise the wire will go into your finger or your hand. So hold the gas nozzle by the sides, then on. You trim the wire off at about three millimetres from the tip, and we're now ready to weld. We've got the handy Weld 160 machine, um, and we've now decided that we want to change and go away from using gasless wire and weld, weld with solid wire. We're going to need shielding gas. So to do that, you have to go and buy the uh, accessory kit, which is the gas hose and regulator. Okay? So to hook this up, first thing you do, Turn off the machine. The gas hose has got a, a hose clamp on it, so make sure that stays on the hose and simply just push that hose onto the barbed nipple at the back of the machine. It goes on without needing any hot water or anything silly to squeeze it on. And then with a Phillips head screwdriver, tighten up the hose clamp. So it's nice and tight. You're about three millimeters away from the end of the barb. Push that down a bit. And if you want to, you can also do a leak check. And how you do the leak check is you take a bit of washing up detergent in a glass, bit of water, stir it up so it's frothy, bit on your finger, put it around there. And when you, when you charge this system up with the gas, you'll see any bubbles come from there. You'll know it's not tight enough on the hose clamp. So on the opposite end, you're going to have the fitting, which goes onto the regulator, and the regulator's obviously going to go into the gas cylinder. We've got the gas hose connected to the rear of the machine. The other end is just laying on the floor, and here's the gas regulator. Gas regulator's got some plastic caps that you need to take off, protection caps. And this end is called the bull nose and nipple, and it's got an O-ring on it. That screws into the gas cylinder and you screw it in in a clockwise direction and you will need a spanner or a shifting spanner to tighten it up. 
So we've got, and the sight gauge needs to be in the vertical position. Doesn't need to be over tightened, just firm. Firm is what it is, because the actual O-ring does a lot of the sealing. And come down now and pick up the, the end of the gas hose and hook it up to the other end of the regulator. Again, need a spanner just to give a little bit of a tighten up, but not overly tight. And we're now ready to turn the cylinder on and adjust the gas. We wind the adjustment screw fully in so it's closed. Open the cylinder gently, a couple of turns, not all the way. Then we can adjust the correct gas flow as per the operation manual. We've set the machine up for gasless mid. We've done some welding, and you're not just quite happy with the result. Well, the good news about this machine, even though it's got quick set and plate thickness control to take away all the hassles of finding the settings for you, you can still adjust it manually. And how you do that is take the control knob, push it in to the bottom section, which says volts trim, hold that in for two seconds, and it goes to the factory setting, and then you can change up positive, up, increase the voltage, or you can go negative and decrease the voltage. So it's a good handy way of changing the feel of the weld. To get it back to the factory setting, just press and hold for two seconds, and wind it back to zero. In some cases where you've been playing with the settings and you're just not too sure where it all should fit or all should set, the good news is that you can actually do a full factory reset on this machine and it's not hard to do. What you've got to do is you've got to hold the soft button and the control knob together for four seconds and that will change the display and have three horizontal lines. And that's when you know that the machine's been reset to factory setting. Let's give it a go. One, two, three, four. There you go. It's that simple and that quick.